All right, friends, welcome to Mining Positivity with PJ. And yeah, in that last episode, some pretty tragic things happened. Oh no. We faced our first death of the season. And I was highly disappointed, but we didn't lose everything. We were able to keep a few things and um, some amazing things have happened <laughs> since that took place. Actually, that event I feel is going to be a catalyst for what drives this season toward its completion. So once that episode happened, I was so kind of just upset and frustrated. I was like, I need to level back up because I need to get like an actual pickaxe I can use that doesn't have silk touch on it. I don't have any diamonds really left. I think I had two. Um, like, yeah, we're in trouble. We lost our other pick. I had like no iron left. I've got six iron now. But uh, look, I've got 51 emeralds and I'm at level 34. So can you kind of guess what's been going on? So number one, I was like, okay, well, I just recently built this whole farming area so I can level up pretty quickly by farming so i came over here and i really bred up a lot of cows and yeah i got a lot of beef and things going from that look how many sheep we have now it's ridiculous i also went ahead and took care of some pigs i'm sorry if it's super noisy over here because i know with all these animals i mean look at this 61 chickens i just dropped and look how many are still there so i got a lot of levels there but i was like I'm not leveling up fast enough. Like, I I need to get a fortune pick again. We had a fortune two pick, and you just can't go mining for diamonds without fortune. So, I mean, you can, but... Oh, and we, we'll talk about this in a second, too, because I'm super excited about that. So I came over here, and I was like, I'll just fish all my, my entire rest of the way to 30. I fished for, like, a straight hour. Look... Look how many fish are in here. So much fishing. And I think I got to like level 27 or something. It just, I mean, look how many bows I have now because we lost our bows. So actually, I think we're going to do that right away. So we've got a power four flame one um, unbreaking three power. OK, yeah. So just combining these two should do it. And maybe we'll take this one just so we can repair it. But um. I did a ton of fishing that was not cutting it. So I was like, sweet. Uh, I know that you can get a lot of XP from trading with, you know, villagers. So I have all this paper from all of this sugar cane I've been collecting. So let's head over to the village that we decorated, you know, a while back and set up and everything. Because eventually we wanted to start trading there. So I was like, sweet, let's do that. So let's let's go to the village. And I was all excited because, you know, and I had this rule, like if I'm going to go to the village, I have to take Ben. He's super slow. Um, every time I go over here, but it was off camera. So I was like, you know what? I, I don't need Ben right now. And maybe that's what did it because guess what, guys? Guess what? Can you take a guess what happened? Can you just even just guess based upon what happened in that last episode where I fell and burned in the lava? Well, if you can't guess, everyone's gone. Literally, there were villagers everywhere. They're all gone. There's nobody here. So, I mean, there's a cat and an iron golem in there, but all the villagers are gone. The book villager, they're all gone. Like, I don't know where everybody went. They must have got attacked by zombies in the night, but I'm not over here. So I don't know how that could have happened. Actually, while I'm here, I'm going to take this for something you'll see in a little bit. But yeah, like, I, I just, I don't know what happened, but it's a ghost town. It's a ghost town. So uh, there is one guy that was over here wandering. I don't even think he had a profession, but he's gone too now. There's just nobody. So this village is now a ghost town. Excuse me while I eat real quick. There's still a lot of cats over here for whatever reason, though. So that's kind of cool, I guess. It's a cat village. It's just cats that live here. Nobody else. So I was like, oh no, all the villagers are gone. This is terrible. Like, not only is that bad for me trying to level up, but also it's just bad in general because, you know, I need villagers. We've got this one zombie villager trapped over here, but we can't cure him. We haven't found a, a nether fortress yet. We don't have any nether warts. We don't have any blaze rods, so we can't make potions. We can't cure him. So I was like, oh, well, there's that village over there that's got villagers. 
but I should probably go mining. So I went mining and I mined for a long time. This thing was, I used the last two diamonds I had to, to heal this up to 100%. And I mined and I found a lot of stuff, like a lot of diamonds, a lot of iron, a lot of everything, but everything silk touched. So I can't get any of it. And I don't want to like make an iron pick to just, you know, I mean, I've got six iron. That's all I have. And that's because I had all the iron on me when I fell in the lava and it got burnt up. So I came over here to this village and thankfully there were still villagers here. There was a little pin where a bunch of animals were and there was some grass next to it. So apparently, as I've been traveling around this area, filling the maps and stuff like that, that uh, little piece of grass was enough for the villagers to walk into that pin and get trapped. So I've been trading with this dude. He just needed some some clay, which I dug out of the, the river right there. And then I just gave him a ton of stone, just like a ton, because when I was silk touch, in the mine, I was getting nothing but stone. So I was like, great. So all these guys fell in here, so I just trapped them in. And so I've been trading with them and getting emeralds. And that's how I got all the emeralds. And that's how I got my XP level up to 34. So fantastic. We're going to be right back on track really, really quickly here. While I had all those emeralds, though, I was traveling back and forth to base. And the wandering trader showed up. And I was able to buy four more um saplings for dark oak so that tree that was there was a dark oak tree so we now officially have a dark oak tree i don't want to even break it down though until we have a hoe with fortune on it so we can guarantee that we're going to get saplings back but man it has been a journey guys it has been a journey of redemption and and renewal since that last episode so it's it's been really good oh no no that's not good so what I want to do now is actually get myself an iron pick and get it enchanted so that we can hopefully get some fortune on here. So let's go ahead and do that now. And we need to get out of this rain anyways because creepers can cause problems for us. So let's go ahead and make the iron pick. So this iron pick will only be used for a little bit just so we can get fortune on all the stuff that we wound up getting from the mine. So let's go ahead and get our lapis. Let's go ahead and throw this in here. Come on, fortune. Oh, I'm breaking three. Uh, it could be fortune, though. I don't know. It's uh, 34. We'll be able to enchant again, I guess. Wish me luck. Fortune three. Okay. I, it, yes. <laughs> like on the first try. That was awesome. That was awesome. Oh, that was so good. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and risk heading to the mines because it's not really. Oh, no, it is nighttime. Okay. So can I just sleep through this? Yes. Oh, guys, this is it's working out so well. I have a plan for this episode. And so far, the plan is going perfectly. We need to make sure there's no creepers out here. I don't see any. Let's just book it to the mine real quick. So, um, oh yeah, there's definitely mobs that spawned out here. So I just saw this awesome village, like, uh, not awesome village. I just saw this awesome video about an easy way to set up a villager trading hall. And we're going to do that in the next episode. But in this episode... We're going to look at something I found while I was mining that is an absolute game changer. When I said that last episode is going to be a catalyst to pushing this toward the end of the season, it's absolutely true. So when I came to this mine, I was like, well, we're going to need a bunch of diamond. We're going to need a bunch of iron. We're going to need a bunch of stuff. And I mined. Sorry about the eating. <laughs> it's so loud. But I mined for hours and hours and hours. And... One of the things I said a while back was that I watched a video and this guy said, hey, in 1.18 and above now, when you're in a mine and you're in a, a cavern or um, I forget exactly what this is called over here. It's where it's there's the large crack in the ground. But if you're in an open space underground, pay attention to everything around you. Now, you guys can go back in the videos and look at how many times I jumped down here. 
Like how many times? How many times? How many times did I see that area right there? I mean, a lot. Like, a lot. And uh, before we even look at the stuff I mined, we, ne we need to go in this area. So while I was mining, I was like, okay, you know what? Let me look around this cavern a little bit. And I came in here, and no freaking way, looky, looky, what just happened to be here for me. Do you see that? Do you see that right there? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We got ourselves a zombie spawner. And not only do we have a zombie spawner, but look what was in this chest. I didn't want to take anything out of here until you guys saw it. Look. An enchanted apple. I'm never going to use this. I'm just going to put it, like, in a display case or on an item frame. But, like, what? What? This was here the whole time, a million times. I went slowly down that waterfall and looked right over here at this huge thing of lava that was calling out to me and never once came in here. And so it just took me being slightly frustrated. I'll be honest, I was slightly frustrated by, by that death in that last episode, but for me to start looking around. But when I say I went mining, I went mining, guys. Let's see how many diamonds we're going to get from this right here. Did this have him breaking? Yeah, I look at this thing. This thing is nuts. But, okay, how many diamonds are we gonna get out of this 30 right here? Well, we're already... We're already past 30. Are we gonna more than double? This is so good, we more than doubled. That, oh, guys, guys, we're back. We are so back. I'm so happy right now. Oh, I'm so happy. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Just so happy. I love doing this. I did this a lot in the first season where I would just go mining intentionally with Silk Touch. And then at the end of an episode, just bust out the fortune and just see what we'd get from things. But, um... Yeah, this was not a, something I wanted to have, you know, happen to me. But we're, we're totally back. We're totally back. This is going to give us some iron, but I've got a lot more iron because I actually went to the iron level and wound up getting a bunch of stuff there. I'm not going to do these right now because we don't really need them. But if you're curious how much mining I actually did do, I think I had gone up to like here or something. So like... I would just go and go and go and go. And then when I would find lava, I would dig above it and then look around everything that was down there. But just at least like two and a half hours, if not three hours of mining. And, you know, I really, to be honest, didn't find a ton of diamond. That's why I was like, I can't get any of this without having a fortune pick because, yeah, like it was not really that much. So we need to get back up to iron level which is 14. Oh, so that would be th that one right there. Uh, nope, that's 17. So I went a little too high. Let's go down here. I gotta figure out a better way to s set up getting to the- No, 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 no! Oh! Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow, I- mm. Uh-huh. I would have been so mad if I died right there with all this stuff on me. Uh-huh. Why is everything spawning up there? That area's lit. That should not be happening. Come on, I'm just trying to get to level 14. And actually, I don't even think I was high enough. If I stay in the water, the creeper shouldn't be able to damage me. No, I wasn't even high enough. Mm. Guys, I can't make this stuff up. <laughs> I'm glad these things happen on camera. Because, what... That was ridiculous. That was ridiculous. This is it. This is my iron level. Okay. So yeah, I was up here. Went like that kind of just stopped right there, but it went down in this cavern and went around there. And yeah, lots and lots and lots of stuff going on here. Who's growling at me? Oh. Can you Where where'd he go? Okay. Whatevs. Uh where's that? Yeah. 55 iron. 
So that's going to be a lot of iron right now. We're, we're going to get quite a bit of iron. Here we go. I don't even think I can go back. Yeah, I can go back 55 blocks. Look at this. Iron farm. <laughs> I don't need no iron farm. Actually, I probably would <laughs> enjoy an iron farm. I just don't make farms. Like, I just, I don't know. At some point, I should probably learn how they work. And, I, you know, Stoic, his videos, if you don't know who that is, look him up. Because he makes these crazy farms that just, like, blow my mind. And, you know, it's not my thing. Like, I, I just... It's not my thing in Minecraft, but I love watching that kind of stuff and like just seeing how the mechanics work and all of that. Like, it's just so fascinating, but I really should start learning how to make some small. I want some small automated farms, but look at that. What? What? We're back. We're back, baby. So actually, wait, I don't think we need to go anywhere. What I want to do in this episode is I want to set up that XP farm. That's what I want to do. So let's do that. Oh, I almost made it right from one waterfall to another. And so we're going to have to start lighting this thing up real well. We're going to have to start making a nice um, walkway to get to and from things. But first, before we do any decorating, um, I want to go ahead and just knock out this XP farm. So that's something I do create in uh, my worlds and stuff like that when I play. And so we're going to get started here. The first thing I'm going to do is make a chest actually i'm gonna yeah create some storage here and i'm nervous about this like is this gonna collapse if i remove a piece of this no okay so it looks fairly stable i just don't want to like come over here put something down and like all of this just fall through on me but let's go ahead and get a crafting table down so we'll do that then we'll go ahead and make ourselves Maybe like four chests to begin with. We're going to get a lot of stone and stuff out of this. So we're going to need a place to kind of store these things. I thought I heard a creeper behind me for a second. Like, yeah, that's the other thing. I'm going to have to be really careful. Plus, like this, this just looks cool. Like, look at this area. So what I'm envisioning here is we're going to create some of that new glass. That's it's black. You use the crystals from the amethyst cave. And you mix it with glass, and you can make this glass that allows you to see in, but light doesn't penetrate. And so I want to put some redstone and have some redstone lights in here. So where I can flick a switch here, it will light the area up, which will disable the spawner. Because spawners are disabled by light levels. Now it's no longer like, you don't have to do that whole thing where you like put torches. It's really just about the fact that there's light here. So if the room's bright enough, they won't spawn. But I'd like to be able to flick a switch, go in the spawner room if I need to for whatever reason and adjust something and do that. But yeah, so first things first, I'm going to put all of my stuff in here, empty out this chest, and we're going to talk about the dimensions of making the spawner room. So let me do that. And uh, yeah, we'll be right back. Okay, so I got everything moved over here, but I just realized something we can start smelting up all this stuff without without really too much effort so look at because we have all this lava here and we have all this crazy amount of iron now we could just slap these four down we'll get our first bucket going here actually can i make three more buckets i can make two more buckets We'll go ahead and just get lava and use that as our fuel source and we'll get all this iron smelting up and everything. We don't need that going on, so hopefully we won't get too many of those uh, blob guys bouncing around in here. But yeah, this is this is so good. This is so good. We've got just tons and tons of lava. So getting lava will definitely not be a problem for us. Not whatsoever. And I could go ahead and throw this iron or this water bucket down and just get a fourth lava thing, but unnecessary. And we might need this water. Like, I don't know what's going to pop out at us when we... Oh, we are going to have problems with these guys bouncing around in here. That's okay. They're, they're pretty easy to take care of, but... As I say that, and then they're like, what'd you say? This is our turf. 
I wish the combat would get overhauled like in this game. A lot of times in Minecraft, I just feel like I'm randomly spamming something and there's no real anything going on. And I kind of abandoned the shield just because I, I was like, in this season, I'm going to use the shield. I'm going to use the shield. I just don't like it, guys. Like, I just, I don't like the shield. Like, I don't know. Just, I'm not loving it. But this, this I'm loving. This is such, such a good thing. So we'll just start with the iron first. And we'll just let this lava do its thing and melt that up for us. And you can get the gold going too, I guess. Yep, that's the one. All right. That, that is just an absolute, why am I opening everything? <laughs> I'm trying to eat, but it's just an absolute game changer. For sure. All right. Uh, the other thing I want to do is make an anvil and go ahead and repair this because this is what I want to use to actually break all this stuff up. I don't want to be using this gift from the Minecraft, you know, creators that just came to me a minute ago. Guys, what are the odds? What are the odds? Honestly, what are the odds that I... Uh, look, 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 look. This game... Oh, here. This game is an achievements enabled game. I, I'm not, it's in survival, it's on hard. What are the odds? What are the odds that I'm gonna get that on the first try? Apparently great, I don't know. Seems crazy to me, but um, I want this iron to smelt up so I can go ahead and make an anvil and we can get some stuff repaired and get going here. So I'm gonna do that and we'll be back. All right, we got everything repaired, and our first step is we need to make a four by four by four by four just open room by the spawner. So one, two, three, four. So we're gonna remove all of this and go four blocks down. And then we're gonna do the same right here. One, two, three, four, and make like a little cross, three, Four. One, two, three, four. Which is basically the spawner room itself. It kind of spawns that way. And then we need to make sure that we're one, two, three. We need to remove one more layer of the wall above us so that we have four blocks going up. One, two, three, four. And four blocks going down. And then we'll go ahead and remove all of these sections as well. So I'm going to go ahead and gut this all out, and then we'll be right back, because it's kind of boring. Okay, so we got our 4x4 four four hole here, and this is what it should look like. So it's just a large, open, empty room. It's got four blocks, four blocks, four blocks up, four blocks down, and then from there, we can continue on with our next step. Okay, all of our iron has gone ahead and smelted up, so we're actually going to need this bucket because we need to have some infinite water source over here for our next part. So let's go ahead and just go get some more water. And these are streams, but I'm pretty sure like that should work right there. I just got to make sure I don't fall in the lava here. I think I'll just block this off. Okay. And then we'll grab that guy. We'll come back over here. And apparently a zombie or a skeleton fell to its death. Cool. Very cool. Alright, now that I have my two buckets of water, we can get started on the next portion here. And I'll go ahead and put this in, because this is kind of where I'm thinking I want the, the viewing window. So maybe like, like right here or something. This will be where I can walk up and kind of view what's happening. Actually, maybe this layer too. Yeah, we'll put the glass in there. Um, but yeah, so let's talk about pushing the zombies where we want them. So when the zombies start spawning out, we want them to kind of fall back there. So I'm going to go ahead and put water here and then go every other. So I have an infinite water source. There we go. And if this worked out, then we should have one empty roll down here. So the zombies will spawn, fall down, and we'll go ahead and knock out 
this entire row right here. Now it's a little dark in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put some torches because the last thing I want is like some creeper spawning or something like that. And then, yeah, that's gonna make problems for us. It would have been nice if we had scaffolding because when I have to remove all these torches, that's gonna be a little problematic as well. But, all right, so if we are following along, that's where we should be right now. We should have a nice place where the zombies will get pushed by the water. They'll just kind of float over here and then, boop, fall right in there. All right, so our next step is going to be to come over here, grab one of our water sources, and then we're going to push it right there. So now, let's just simulate this. I'm a zombie. I've spawned. I fall here, and I get pushed right into this spot right here. So the zombies will kind of build up. And then we'll go ahead and start digging this area out now. Alright, so now we can get a little more water here. So now that our zombies drop down right here, we're going to have them go... Wow. Wow. Wow, game. Just thank you. Appreciate it. So, actually, I didn't want to go that far. We're going to come down one. We're going to go one, two... And then come this way. And we're just gonna, oops. We're just gonna go until the water stops. So, if this is right, this should come and turn here. And then we'll dig this out to the point that the water actually stops pushing me. Let me go ahead and put a torch here. So this is the spot right here. So now... Bear with me for a second as I fight my way back over here. So I need to get another water bucket. But then we'll go ahead and test this out and make sure. I would say it's a lot easier to, you know, correct something before you get the whole thing down. Than it is to, you know, get fully done and then be like, wait a minute, something's not working here. So we'll go ahead and just test this. Let's say I spawned over here. I'm not touching my controller. We'll just see where this puts us. And yep, I landed right there. So, so far, so good. I'm a little concerned that my zombie might get stuck right here. A zombie is too high. So I'm going to just remove that. That's probably unnecessary. That probably was fine the way it was, but I just want to be sure. Okay, so now for this part, I'm going to go down four, four blocks. Now, I'm trying to think where I'm facing. We could wind up lowering this more if the zombies don't take enough damage when I release them, but I need to kind of dig myself out into that terrain now so I can see where I actually am. So this is where we want them to fall, and then we'll kind of block them off. We'll put some ways to kind of collect their loot as we kill them here. But we don't want them to die from the fall. So first, let me get myself out here so I can see exactly what I'm working with. Okay, it took a little bit for me to figure out like how to get from the point I was trying to get out to have the mob um, kill chamber to back to where this was so it wound up being at 999 over there so once i got that situated now we can come back here and just do one final check that we're in the right spot and that everything is working the way it should be and these blob guys are spawning like mad over here it's nuts but that's fine it's, it's totally doable okay we fall in here we get brought to the water stream, we come over here, we drop down again. I'm not touching my controller other than moving my guy around. And then we fall into this. Okay, and then they should take a little bit of damage, but they shouldn't die. So now we need to be able to drop them in here and have them fall right here and then have a way to collect their loot as we swipe and kill them and have it automatically go into a chest. So, 
In order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and just make a 4x4 four four room here, which is more space than what we need, but this way I just... Oh, it, it just keeps giving. It just keeps giving, guys, and I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. Um, we don't need that single bone, so that's fine. We'll take that away. And we don't need that slime either. Go ahead and throw that in there. Yeah, so let me dig out this little space, and then we'll come right back. Okay, so I got my chest here. I think we're going to need just a single hopper. So we'll go ahead and make that, which I believe we can make. We have cobblestone. Oh, we need stone, right? Uh, let's see what we need here. Oh, no, we need a chest. Um, That's not great because... We're getting low on resources here. We can wind up... I mean, we've got tons. We've got tons. I'm not super worried about it. So we got that, and then we'll go ahead and make ourselves a slab. Or a couple slabs, apparently. We'll put this chest down here. So this is the, the, the actual block we want the zombie to land on. Is this one, I believe. So we'll put our yeah we'll put our chest here we'll put our hopper oops go ahead and crouch down jump put our hopper there remove that for a second now the zombie should fall right here we can just swing and they're done actually i don't even think we need this guy right here so what we need to do now actually though is test this thing so, they should not be able to get out of there. No, not going to be able to. And we can wind up expanding this into a double chest and doing whatever we want later on. But let's head up there and go ahead and seal up. Let me make sure I've got plenty of this black, or deep slate. So we can seal up that thing for now. We'll wind up putting the glass and stuff probably in a different episode. But... Because even though on your side it's a short episode, on my side it's been a lot of time filming. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get ourselves back up there. Okay, and here's going to be the difficult part too, is I have to get rid of all these torches now. So I'm thinking maybe I just make myself a little pathway here to wipe them all out. Maybe that's my plan. We do need a slab to put on top of the spawner. You do want to have one slab on top of your spawner so that zombies don't spawn up on top of it and then get stuck there, which could slow down the rates in which the mobs are dropping. So, okay, I think I'm going to have to kind of just get in here and get rid of these torches, come out the other side, which I'll have to break myself out. And then handle it that way. Yeah. Okay, so let me do that. We need to figure out a better way of getting up here as well. So it takes a long time to get back up here. Okay. Whew. I'm a little nervous. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous. You know, did I make everything correct? Is everything the right dimensions? Like, I believe so. Uh, we have to be very careful, too, coming out here, that we don't inadvertently break the spawner. So, let's take my time here. Make myself a little. And there we go. They're spawning, like, just like that. They're just spawning. So, we know that's working. And we'll go ahead and just seal this off. And yeah, I'm excited. That's cool. That's very, very cool, actually. <laughs> Pretty sweet. It'll be nice when we have the glass in and we can kind of look in here to kind of see everything. But, all right. It's in complete, utter darkness now. And let's go down there and kind of see what's going on. Make sure nobody's stuck anywhere or clogged up or anything like that and if they are it's fixable everything here is nice and fixable so no worries i'm super worried these blob guys are going to wind up pushing me into the lava at some point so 
That's got me a bit nervous. And I'm also nervous I'm going to turn a corner and there's going to be a bunch of zombies roaming here. No, and they didn't die. So they took fall damage, but they did not die. Alright guys, that's been exactly five minutes. And there's a lot of zombies here. Like, let's... Yeah, it's working. <laughs> it's working just fine. And so we'll let that all kind of come out of the hopper. And some of it got into my inventory directly. But yeah, this this is working. So I think there's a couple things we can do to make it better. Like put an enchanting room here. Put a repair workshop there. Put ice along the top. Put our glass wall in so we can actually watch it just for fun. But this has been epic. Oh, that's not ep epic. I don't want him over there. But um, before we finish off here, I want to create the new bow. And so we have that capability now. So go ahead and get rid of you. And you're no threat to us here with all this water. So, But I don't want you floating around down here either. So, And then we're going to spend some time here, I think, because I want to transform this into a lush chasm. Like... Why not? What? What is? Where did he even just come from? Somewhere up there. Okay. So that can happen. We'll have to be weary of that. And we just got a bow. So this game is just like really giving to me. Tell me there's like a skeleton spawner up there. I think we're going to find other things. I'm going to explore everywhere in here. We got a wandering trader in here, which we still have our emeralds on us. So if he's got good stuff, we'll be buying all of that. We're going to get... Lots and lots of slime being here. What do you got, buddy? Uh, nothing really good. I mean, the gunpowder is kind of good, I guess. Can we, get, can we get XP from him as well? Yeah, we do. You get a lot of XP trading. And I don't mind spending the emeralds because we're going to have, like, unlimited emeralds now. But, okay. So let's go ahead and make our new bow. We'll put these down here. Go here. We'll do power. And unbreaking. So there's nine that way. Seven that way. So we'll do that. I don't believe this will actually add anything to it. Power. Oh, it did. It went to power five. Oh, no. It was at power five. Okay. All right. Sweet, so we'll do that. And then we'll go ahead and just do this and just make sure. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. All right, so we have a functioning bow again. We've got a functioning fortune pick. We don't even need a diamond pick anymore with, you know, looting or fortune. We can just use this one. That's totally fine. I, I'm fine with that. But this has been completely, utterly successful. In the next episode, we'll go ahead and upgrade this thing. And then we'll start working on our villager trading hall. And like I said, this is where the season is going to take off. And we're going to go find ourselves a nether fortress. We're going to get ourselves nether wart. We're going to start brewing potions. We're going to make a super fast horse. We're going to do all kinds of stuff. And guys, I am so excited. And I can't wait to see you on the next episode of Mining Positivity. Bye, friends.